Good evening. Tonight's program is a repeat of last week's. The Emerald City Show number two will appear in this time slot one week from tonight. Thank you. Good evening, and welcome to the Emerald City. My name is Frank O'Dowd, and for the next several months, this program will be aired twice weekly, first on Monday evening from 9 to 10 p.m., and then repeated on Thursday from 8.30 to 9.30. Initially, the program is being carried by both the Manhattan Cable and Teleprompter Systems. We have intentions of expanding through syndication later this spring. This expansion, of course, is totally dependent on the acceptance or reception of the program here in New York. Uh, uh, you may find it interesting to note that it works exactly the opposite of, say, a Broadway show, in that we're opening here in New York to eliminate the risk of closing in either Boston or Philadelphia. Uh, but in all seriousness, we feel that a show like The Emerald City uh, is more apt to gain acceptance here in New York than anywhere else in the nation, with maybe the exception of certain parts of the West Coast. After all, The Emerald City is a gay-oriented television show, and as we all know, New York is not lacking in a chair of gay people. The show is being done in magazine format in order to cater to a variety of tastes. Uh, in doing this, we hope to make it as entertaining as it is informative. It is, however, an experiment, and of course, we would like some feedback from you. You could write in. Uh, after all, this is a giant media breakthrough pertaining to your lifestyle. Again, the show is targeted at the gay population, but its audience can be diversified. On tonight's show, uh, we are not giving the lowdown on anybody. Later, we will be visited by Mr. Jonathan Katz, author, playwright, his latest work, Gay American History. Mr. Katz will be joined by Mr. David Rogensack, a director who, among other things, directed Mr. Katz's own work, the play uh, coming out last year. Uh, we will also be talking with and taking a look at the song style of Miss Juanita Fleming, a uh, prominent vocalist currently appearing on the New York circuit. Uh, then we'll take a look at the Manhattan Lambda production of the play Seven Fabulous Nights and a glimpse of last season's off-Broadway hit Boy Meets Boy. Uh, on hand will be with the news, Miss Cheryl Gross and Harry Hart Brown. And later in the program, we'll spend five minutes with our own tattler, George Sardi. Uh, we sincerely would like to reach you, so relax, sit back, and stay with us. Oh, and incidentally, performers appearing on the Emerald City are not necessarily gay. Thank you. Gentlemen, the Alibaba proudly presents Miss Juanita Fleming. Move over, son, and give me some scalp. Got me some wings, and I'm eager to try. I may be unknown. But wait till I'm alone. You're gonna hear from me. Make 
make me some room, you people up there. On top of the world, I'll meet you, I swear. I'm staking my claim, remember my name. You're gonna hear from me, ocean spies. On the road before me, I am fortune's child. Hey, the certain world you can't ignore me. I've got a song that longs to be played. Lift up my flag, begin my parade, and watch the world over. Start coming up clover. That's how it's gonna be. You see, you're gonna hear from me. Make me some room, you people out there. On top of the world, I'll meet you. I swear. I'm sticking my claim, remember my name. That's how it's gonna be, you see. You're gonna hear from me, you see. You're gonna hear from me, you see. I'm Cheryl Gross. And I'm Harry Hart Brown, and here is the news. The incumbent Mayor Clay Shaw, Fort Lauderdale's most prominent homophobe, has won re-election. Mayor Shaw, for those of you who are unfamiliar, was the Florida alarmist who only months ago warned that the gays were threatening to take over Fort Lauderdale. Shaw, incidentally, is the official who is giving a certain Florida gay magazine publisher a very tough time running his new hotel on the beach. Two different books on male sexuality have recently been banned for importation into Canada. The books, Loving Man by the late Dr. Mark Friedman and Harvey Mays, <clears throat> and Men Loving Men, published by, this, by the Gay Sunshine Press, were considered entirely too explicit and consequently indecent and immoral. Mays, the remaining author of Loving Man, plans to challenge this decision. The former vice mayor of Rochester, New York, Margaret Midge Costanza, has recently been named as President Carter's public liaison. She will be working with minority groups, including gays. Bruce Veller and Gina O'Leary, executive directors of the National Gay Task Force, met with Costanza last month in Washington, and they set plans to meet again this month, this time with additional troops. A wide range of topics are to be discussed. Miss Gay USA, Mr. Gay USA, and... Miss Transsexual USA. A joke? No. Strangely enough, a reality. Gay America Pageants, a firm out of Syracuse, New York, has recently announced these nationwide competitions. They will be split into four regional division finals. Prizes totaling $20,000 will be handed out at Madison Square Garden's Felt Forum during the Eastern Finals this August. U.S. Representative Edward J. Markey of Massachusetts, who represents the 7th Congressional District of that state, has recently become an official co-sponsor of the Federal Gay Rights Bill. Markey is now the third member of the Massachusetts Congressional Delegation to sponsor this bill. Speaking of legislation, Connecticut's Sexual Orientation Bill has graduated favorably out of committee and will be coming up before the House sometime before April 15th. The U.S. Department of State announced last month that it has discontinued, discontinued its policy of automatically barring gay people from employment and will now decide such matters on an individual case-by-case -case basis. All that glitters. The new Norman Lear series premiering this month is a television show with a different twist. It involves a huge corporation with women employed only in the important positions. The only men portrayed will be either an occasional secretary or a husband. Yes. Lear's staff, by the way, has their eye on Michael's Thing columnist Loretta Lottman as a potential scriptwriter for this series. Like Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman, this show will air nightly. And that's the news. Uh, we have people working on legislation, and we have homophobes getting reelected. We have a role reversal television show, but we're still getting gay books being banned. I don't know. What do you think? Well, the item that paints the most vivid picture in my mind is uh, the gay beauty pageant. <laughs> uh -huh. It reminds me of the time I was in Boise, Idaho, for instance. And uh, it was a national foot convention. And um, instead of having a beauty pageant or whatever, they had, like, who would have, like, you know, the craziest feet, 
you know, <laughs> smelliest feet. And it, it was just the most ridiculous thing I've ever... I, I just thought it was like so goddamn stupid, you know. <laughs> All these Did toes waving in the it? air. Did I? No, I, by no, I was just so intimidated by the whole thing, you know. It was just nothing I could do. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, that's bad. That's yeah. Bad. I feel torn about the pageant myself because... Uh, I think it's great the words gay and transsexual are being used a lot and put into the public ear and eye. And um, it's important at this stage of the game, hopefully we'll be able to transcend those labels. But for now, fine. And uh, <laughs> as the scarecrow needed a diploma to believe he could think, maybe gay people need a pageant like this to believe they can fit in. What ethic is my question? Is it the physical beauty ethic? Uh, well, Marilyn Monroe fit that beautifully. Is it the success ethic? Well, Freddie Prinze fit that beautifully. Mm. You know, is there something more important? If so, is now the time to examine it? Maybe we're doing fine for now. I don't know. I'm confused. Oh, I don't think that pertains to all gay people. But anyway, mm -hmm. anyone who's interested in uh, the Boise, Idaho Foot Fair or whatever the convention may be, you can contact this station. <laughs> And this is Cheryl Gross. And this is Harry Hart Brown. Saying good night. Good night. Frankie, did you put the cheese cost across the lens? I want to look young and gorgeous. Sure, you're on. Surely you jest. Oh, my. Oh. Huh. <laughs> Hello. My name is George Sardi. Welcome to Emerald City. Ah! I learned that from lies and cabaret. Oh, do come in a little closer and join me. I'm here to give you the delish dish, the trivia, and the usual bull. So let's get right on to it. This is their latest, and you know who, don't you? Now, if I were the lampshade type of the party, you know where I put this, right? Right between my teeth. No way. Oh, a couple more goodies. Two male Hershey bars. I wonder what they were doing together. Were they being naughty? Oh, uh, that girl. I tell you, she would lose her head if it wasn't attached to her shoulders. She's something else. Dorothy! Oh, here it is. The delish dish. Now, for openers we have, Universal Pictures is going to have a picture out produced by Max Bear Jr. And it's going to be a bisexual movie, uh -huh, whatever they are. It's The Joys of Hustling by Greg Tyler. And Robbie Benson, who had the lead in Ode to Billy Joe, will have the lead in this also. Rumor has it that Anne Margaret is up for the Jane Mansfield part. And there's going to be a sequence where this girl we all know as Judy Garland is going to be singing. And guess who's going to play the part? That's right, Jim Bailey. Isn't that Marvy? Choreographer Ron Field and author playwright James Kirkwood are going to do a musical. It's going to be called Club Mardi Gras. It's about the closing of a drag club in San Francisco. Now, we all sort of know which that one is, don't we? <laughs> too hot, too hot. Well, here's one for Rona. Sammy Davis Jr. talking to Rona says, I think the most frustrating thing would to be to get to be 70 and say to yourself, I never got a chance to have a homosexual experience. How do you like that, Rona? Right on, Samuel. And then there was Don Dunbury, who was at Fairmount's Venetian Room in San Francisco, who was saying an awful lot of homosexual jokes. Jokes! <laughs> Mercy, can't get it out. Uh, and uh, it didn't go over too well with the crowd. Now, would you believe that a porno film producer is going to do an X-rated film version of Cinderella, and get this, with a black gay fairy godmother. 
I mean, really, don't you think they're going too far? <laughs> Sorry. And now we have Son of Kong. It seems they're going to go back to the island, and what do they find out? That King Kong's son is gay, and he tramples the heroine in the first reel. Then, in May, the National Lampoon is going to have a whole issue all about gay life, and theirs is going to be called Queen Kong. And he's going to fondle Jeff Bridges in his hand. <laughs> That's marvelous fondling, you must admit. While we're on the monkeys, did you know that the monkeys are the most homosexual, and particularly when they're in captivity? It seems that on the set many years ago, when Johnny Weissmeller was Tarzan, he would come on the set, and Cheetah would see him and get so aroused, but so aroused, that they had to kill all this time until the little pecker went down. Now, this wasted an awful lot of money. So what they did one day, the director is so exasperated, he says, paint the damn thing black, and I'm with the show. And they did just that. Now, I have a little graffiti here. It's my favorite, and I hope you will enjoy it, too. I saw it in this John, and it goes thusly. Anyone can piss on the floor, but be a hero and shit on the ceiling. How does that grab you? Well, I think enough of that nonsense is for now. I would like to say to you all, to the girlfriend, night. Good night, men. two reasons why this program exists. First, it exists for you, the audience, to inform you, to entertain you, and to keep you in touch with the current gay experience in New York, this country, and in the world. We'll be bringing it to you right here each week. The second reason we exist is to make you, the audience, aware of the exploding business community that is out there to provide you with the goods and services designed for your lifestyle. Prior to the Emerald City, the world of television advertising has been closed to these businesses. Because we are aiming this show directly at you, we can serve our sponsors by bringing them to your attention. For the first time, television, the most potent advertising medium, is available to specialized businesses. The rates are low, particularly when we are first starting. And we intend to keep our audience and to have it grow with each week. If you are an advertiser, or if you own a business, and have never thought of yourself as an advertiser, let us tell you how inexpensive and easy it is to take advantage of this medium. We will keep this program within a high standard and will develop ways to keep the feedback going between sponsor and audience. If you can help us, you will be helping keep gay television alive in Manhattan and throughout the world. We have no massive organization behind us and then we are not tied to any ideological or commercial structure. With your help, the Emerald City can be an independent force in this community. Help us by letting our sponsors know you watch their ads. And if you're a potential sponsor, get in touch with us. Write us at Truth, Justice, and the American Way Productions, 106 Central Park South, Room 550, New York, New York, 10019. Or call us at 246-1115. If you think this type of programming should continue, make a note to either write or call us now. Thank you. Everybody, put your hands together right here with me. Right there. Trash men didn't get my trash today. Because they want more pay. Buses don't strike, wanna raise in fair. So they can help pollute the air. But that's what makes the world go round the ups and downs of Paracel. Wall Street loses 
it on every share. You know they're blaming it on longer hair. Big wig smoking in their easy chair. On a fat cigar without a care. But that's what makes the world go round. The ups and downs of carousel. Changing people's heads around the underground young men. People make the world go out there folks for the hands that's what makes the world go round the ups and downs of carousel changing people's heads around go underground young men people make the world go round people You 
To the dark To the dawn and to the endless skies. The first time ever. just witnessed a rather dazzling performance by Miss Juanita Fleming, a, a dynamic performance. Juanita, you're terrific. Thank you. Numero uno. Uh, tell me, I mean, this is Alibaba on First Avenue and 59th Street. Where are some of the other clubs around the city that you've performed in over the past couple of years? I hear you've been here. Oh, uh, once at Buddy's Place, at the Grand Finale, at Galaxy 21, um, in the city itself. Oh, God, there's so many clubs. I can't think of all the clubs where I've worked, but there have been quite a few around. I think I've hit uh, most of the clubs in the city. Which did you, which did you prefer? Where were you taking best? <laughs> well, I must say I'm a little partial to a club that uh, was called Galaxy 21. because Gal That's on 23rd Street? It, it was on 23rd Street. It recently closed. I hear it's going to reopen. I've heard rumors of that nature myself, but I'm not sure. Where, where are you originally from? Cincinnati, Ohio. Ohio. 
Uh, what type of an audience do you turn on most to? I mean, you know, you really feel at ease amongst, I mean, and you know, really react. Well, I'm, I once had the opportunity to uh, answer that question.